Ukrainian drones attacked the Morozovsk military airfield in Russia's Rostov Oblast on the night of 4 to 5 April. Vasily Galyubev, the governor of Rostov Oblast said this. Witnesses reported numerous drones and counted more than 60 explosions. Several districts have been cut off from the power grid after it, according to Telegram channels Russian six aircraft destroyed, eight damaged after Ukrainian drone attack. The attack on the Morozovsk airfield was carried out by the Ukrainian Defense Intelligence together with the military and defense forces frontline bombers Su-24, Su-24M, Su-34 were based at the airfield, these are the types of aircraft Russia uses to drop KABs on the positions of the Ukrainian armed forces in frontline Ukrainian cities. Dolyubev confirmed a large-scale attack in the Morozovsk district. He said that the Russian air defense units were repelling the attack. Morozovsk is a military airfield in Russia's Rostov Oblast, located 3 kilometers southwest of the city of Morozovsk. The airfield is a base of the 559th Guards Bomber Regiment of the 1st Guards Mixed Aviation Division of the Russian Air Force. Frontline bombers Su-24, Su-24M or Su-34 are stationed at the airfield. In December, drones attempted to attack the military airfield in Morozovsk, where frontline aircraft were stationed. Putin's backbone. Belarus provides large military assistance to Russia in the war against Ukraine. The Belarusian military industrial complex is assisting in meeting the needs of the Russian army on the front lines. How and why Lukashenko's regime became one of the key allies in the war for the Kremlin is explained in the material by RBC Ukraine. Since the beginning of the large-scale aggression, Belarus has become a key ally of Russia in conducting military operations against Ukraine within the first seven months of the full-scale war. According to the Belarusian Hadun project, Alexander Lukashenko transferred over 65,000 tons of ammunition, hundreds of T-72A tanks, BMPs and Ural trucks to Russia. Only when Belarusian depots were depleted due to Putin's appetites, other countries, primarily Iran and North Korea, have become the main suppliers of ready-made weapons for Russia. Russia utilizes the full range of services from the Belarusian military industrial complex, but the key assistance lies in the restoration of military equipment damaged as a result of combat actions. Back in 2022, at the beginning of full-scale aggression, 60% of Belarusian military goods were destined for the Russian market. Today, this figure has increased even more. Currently, 120 Belarusian plants and design bureaus are involved in the production of 1,600 types of military products and services for the Russian Federation. In contrast, 940 Russian enterprises supply about 4,000 items to 67 Belarusian military enterprises. There is no other sphere where cooperation between these countries is as close as in the military sector. Moreover, analysis of open sources suggests that the production of of the Belarusian military industrial complex is increasing. The Belarusian defense industry has also switched to military rails today. Hundreds of thousands of workers are employed in the plants who simply cannot be unaware of where the products they manufacture are going. However, military enterprises are perhaps the only sphere where one can earn a more or less decent salary in Belarus. Elwin Mamaka, an Iraqi man who carried out several Quran burnings in Sweden, was reportedly found dead in Norway. He had staged several burnings and desecrations of the Sacred Book of Islam in Sweden over the past few years. Last week Mamaka told a newspaper that he had been seeking asylum in neighboring Norway. Mamaka, a Christian who turned atheist, was amongst the critics of Islam. Mamaka moved out of Iraq in 2018, seeking asylum. Though a Christian who turned atheist, Mamaka called himself an extreme ex-Muslim. Ex-Muslims are individuals who identified as Muslims once, left the religion due to personal reasons, differing beliefs, or disillusionment with its teachings, practices, or community norms, he added. Mamaka had recently put an update about him shifting to Norway from Sweden. He also revealed that he has applied for asylum and protection from the Norwegian authorities.
Further he confirmed that he will continue his fight against Islamic ideology no matter whatever it costs. My love and respect for the Swedish people will remain the same, but the persecution I was subjected to by the Swedish authorities does not represent the Swedes. I will continue my struggle against Islamic ideology since I started the struggle against Islam, I have paid and continue to pay the price, and I am ready for that, whatever the cost," he added. Multiple social media handles claimed that Selwyn's lifeless body was found in Norway. He obtained a permanent residence permit in Sweden in 2021, which was withdrawn and he was granted temporary residency until April 2024.